I'm Lacey Ingrao, and this is Be Wise Farms. We uh, have been here since 2018, and we do a variety of products, including lavender. Honey. Also with Be Wise Farms, uh, mainly what I do here on the farm is related to our beekeeping operations. I do a lot of workshops here uh, for beekeeping. We run the Heroes to Hives program out of the farm, uh, which is a nationwide program uh, we offer for veterans uh, with partnerships with MIFS and uh, MSU. And then we also do all sorts of other fun things around wellness and helping individuals come to the farm as a way to reconnect with the natural world, both through agriculture and then just being in the Upper Peninsula. Bright and early, the, the ducks are up with the sunrise. So they are um, making noises and quacking and we hop up fairly early to get them out. And um, from there, we cover a multitude of tasks, including anything from harvesting to um, planting to winter preparation um, as of right now. What else? Yeah, I mean, on a, on a regular day, we may pop into the bees to do inspections to see how things are going. I mean, obviously, during the height of the season, we're pruning plants, we're maintaining our fields, you know, managing pests, doing all the things that farmers do. And, um, and really, it just becomes a part of our daily life, uh, just, just being it with the farm and, and managing it as a part of our lives. And that's just outside. Right. We also yeah. <laughs> maintain, um, you know, we do our own website and, and bookkeeping. We do all of it on that end. And uh, we also participate in a lot of programs off the farm. Um, uh, we do some international work as as well as uh, work stateside. So um, if we're not outside working on the farm, we're inside doing something regarding the business. We do small batch honey um, or varietal honey. So we pull boxes after very specific blooms and um, bottle that honey. Everything is from start to finish right here at the farm. So we um, harvest, bottle, and put it out on the shelf. We don't, um, we don't do a lot of wholesale accounts because we don't have a hard time selling honey. So um, uh, we have a couple throughout the area, but uh, most of the honey that gets produced here gets sold here um, to the community and people passing by. Yeah, most of that honey stays, I'd say, pretty local for the most part, which is pretty awesome. I mean, it's one aspect of our business. I think one of the things I love about the work that we do is that we have these local aspects of our business, like the agricultural aspects, the products that we're producing and, and feeding our community. But like Lacey had mentioned, the international work that we do, you know, it's not just here on the farm. We, you know, we're able to touch lives all around the world and, and some of the programs that we've participated in through a USAID with the, um, with women farmers from East Africa, has, you know, those types of programs allow us to not only give to our community here, but also give to the broader world community um, with the knowledge that we've been blessed to be able to have here. And we've developed some really great relationships because of it. You know, I have some products even here in the store from Uganda because we've we've developed such a great great partnership with with some of the uh, of the women that had came here from that program. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really continued us and furthered us on to to be able to highlight some of those things even now. We started with MIFS shortly after we moved to Michigan. Uh, we moved here in 2013 for me to go to graduate school. And the whole way we came into contact with MIFS was because I was writing a SARE grant at the time as a graduate student. And somebody told me about this amazing organization that I should reach out to to reach underserved communities in agriculture. and. Um, that's where I really wanted to focus with some of my work. And I'll remember I was, MIFS was still located at MSU, uh, on MSU's campus, and they happened to be the building across from my building. And I walked across that, that uh, street and introduced myself to Michelle Napier Dunnings, who was the executive director at the time, and told her that, hey, I was interested in doing some work with veterans. You know, was, do you guys ever do that type of stuff? And she basically allowed me to do any kind of outreach work I wanted with veterans. We ended up starting the Veterans and Ag Network. And then from that point on, I kind of stepped back a little bit from MIFS and then you started working for MIFS. <laughs> yeah, um, I started shortly after um, as their program manager and um, helped out with a variety of projects plus their conference every year. Um, 
And then in 2018, I believe that was 2015 when I started. In 2018, I had to take a step back completely because of the farm that we had in Lansing. And um, it just needed a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I stepped back from program management and took on the role as their event coordinator for the um, Family Farms Conference, Michigan Family Farms Conference. And and that uh, went on for about three years. And this last year, we just transitioned to that over uh, again to a new coordinator. So. Yeah. And then as Lacey was working as coordinator, I was serving on the board for MIFS and uh, Lacey, you left MIFS and I ended up coming back to MIFS this year, uh, helping with um, doing some grant work and, and other projects for MIFS as well. So, I mean, MIFS has been a huge part of our lives. And I mean, all of the work that we have done here on the farm, the programs that we've been able to access through NRCS, through, <laughs> through state programs, through MDARD, all of that has been because of our connections with MIFs and what we've learned, not only working with MIFs, but working for MIFs. Um, you know, our, our MEEP certification has, has been largely because of, of the work that we've done with MIFs and just the access and knowledge of these programs um, that have allowed us to do things on the farm that just have, have been a game changer for us um, and allowed us not only go from what we were at one point, which was part-time farmers, so now we are both full-time farmers. Uh, which is what we've been striving for for the last 16 years. And we do owe a lot of that to MIFS. Oh, absolutely. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Adam and I uh, met a little over 16 years ago, mm -hmm. um, and this was the goal the entire time that we've yeah. been together. We've worked to get to this moment. Um, Yeah, it's a huge, it's been a huge part of our entire strategy, our life strategy. So when we met, we were both working in jobs that were, you know, I was a full-time mechanic, Lacey was working in loss prevention and retail, and we were living in Southern California and doing what everybody was telling us we should be doing, you know, working the nine to five, and it never worked for either one of us. And uh, we, I know very early on, we had conversations about, you know, what is the dream? Like, where do we want to be? and where we both wanted to be was on a farm. I had worked on farms pretty much growing up entirely um, and have worked in agriculture most of my life. Lacey comes from a family that is literally one generation removed from the farm. And so we had this dream of kind of recapturing this life that we felt we had control over, which was producing our own food, you know, providing food for our communities, but feeling like we were part of something bigger than just the machine. And, uh, everything we have done for the last 16 years has been to get to here. I mean, we've got two undergraduate degrees, two graduate degrees, and all of that was not to become some, you know, professor or doctor or anything like that. It was all to become a farmer, um, but to be, you know, the best farmer we could and take advantage of all the resources we could to get the knowledge base to be successful. And here we are 16 years later, you know, with a successful farm business yeah. and one of the most beautiful places in the world. And, uh, I think we scored. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and 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 to ensure you know this whole entire time that we, um, you know, we know what nature does. We know what the exposure to nature does, and um, it's a healing environment. And the more that we can introduce people into that space, um, uh, I think the better this place will be. And um, and what we've done up until now has that's been a huge focus for us as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, there's a lot of obstacles to becoming a farmer. And I mean, just like us, I mean, we we didn't own land. We didn't, we, I think for us, the, the whole strategy to get to this point was not to throw ourselves into debt to become farmers mm -hmm. because that strategy never seems to work out. I mean, you've got to, even though there is, you know, you can, you can take on some of that, it, it becomes a, a real big burden later on. Um, and so one of the things that we started with as we were getting going was we worked with the um, the Lansing uh, Garden Program. The, mm -hmm. I'm forgetting what the name is, sorry. The Lansing Garden Project? Garden Project. So yeah, we started working with the Lansing Garden Project and we literally leased our property to start this farm business. And it was a low cost lease. It got us in, it got us land without any you know major financial barrier. Um, and that was through the land bank. That was through the land mm -hmm. bank, yeah. And that that really helped. Mm -hmm. Having that like incubation period on a piece of property that did not break the bank yeah. 
was huge. It allowed us to develop our online infrastructure. It allowed us to develop our name. It allowed us to get involved in the agricultural community. And all the time, we didn't have a huge mortgage that we were paying to, to land that we were trying to create profit off of. Um, I mean, that was one of the huge, yeah. big barriers. And when, then we waited for the right property. Mm -hmm. And when we found the right property, we had put ourselves in a position where we could take advantage of that without, again, breaking the bank. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, or I think getting into this business, our challenges are gonna be a little different, right? Just based on, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was doing this full time for a really long time initially um, before Adam was able to step away. And, and you know, as a, as a female farmer, just being, you know, taken seriously, mm -hmm. being taken uh, credibly is, is, um, is, a, is a huge barrier. And I think that's shifting and changing. Um, but, you know, I've had people walk in here and say things like, how much of the farm do you do? None of it, you know? And, like, and you just think to yourself, like, you know, I, I understand the perception, um, but there are a lot of us out there um, as as women farmers that are that are taking the land back and um, it's such an important place to sit and mm -hmm. um, so while, while that's not a barrier um, because I don't allow it to be a barrier um, you know just just maneuvering within the world um, can be can be sometimes a challenge mm -hmm. um, yeah but we've done things you know we do things intentionally um, we every step of the way we don't put ourselves so far deep into something that we can't pull ourselves out and and I think that's a huge part of it is is setting really strong intentions um, throughout this entire 16 years and um, just kind of going through that process one of the ways that we we tend to survive is diversifying um, ensuring that we're doing multiple things that we're growing a variety of products um, or a variety of uh, crops to turn into a variety of product uh, and um, we do, we still do off farm stuff. So um, I, I do wellness classes. I teach movement classes and yoga classes um, during the winter specifically as a, as a way to, to bring income when mm -hmm. the farm is not as active during the winter. Um, so diversifying has been a really big um, part of our business in, in ensuring that we're just doing a lot of things all the time uh, to make it work. Yeah. I think another thing kind of also for beginning farmers and, and it's been key in our success has been being part of the farming community. You know, there's so many times where, and I, and I know a lot of friends of, of ours who, who, who may be in this boat where, you know, they're really good at farming, but they're not so ready to be out there and, and working with the community and, and talking about their story and helping people, you know, create their own stories. And I think that's one of the things that has been really key for us and accessing programs and getting help with things is that we have entrenched ourselves into the farming community and to the local food movements. And not only are we working with organizations like MIFs and, and, and being part of the things that they do, but you know, we work with other organizations like Taste the Local Difference and even with the farm bureaus. I mean, we're, we're constantly trying to find ways to be involved in our community. And as a business owner, especially as a small farmer, that's key because that's how people learn who you are and what you're doing and, and start to learn the story about your products. Because I mean, one thing I've learned over this entire journey is that when it comes to selling your farm products, it's not just the product that you're selling, it's the story behind the product. And that's what that's what your customers want to hear is they want to hear the passion they want to hear the love they want to hear why you're doing what you're doing and i think that's one of the best things about you know kind of what we do is that we're out in the community talking about it and we're we're trying to share that that passion with others not only get them excited about local food but also just to get them excited about agriculture in general i mean you know farmers are the one percent <laughs> that in this country and and it you know a lot of people don't have the opportunity to even see a farm or be on a farm and those are the types of things that we like to be part of and you start by uh starting small and mm -hmm. it, it, you know especially as beginning farmers most of us have off farm jobs yeah. right when we start especially um beginning small farmers m many of us do mm -hmm. and uh, we start small you start with one product you start with one size product um, and, and try to get yourself out there. Um, maybe you start with one market a year or two markets a year, right? 
um, start with one one crop to grow, and then you and then you move to another. Um, it's that it's that jumping in both feet, which which can be really good and useful at times um, if you have all of the resources to make that happen. Then it's it's great. Um, yeah. But if you are not coming from that that lifestyle, not coming from your your you know maybe a generation away like I am and, and we didn't we don't have farms to pass down, right? We didn't we didn't take those farms over from our grandparents and our and our parents and um, we have to start exactly where we're at and trying to force that or push that um, really gets you in a position where it's it's hard to come back. It's hard to come back from it. So my advice would be start small. Yeah. Dip your toe in first <laughs> and then and then take a foot in, you know? Yeah. Um, just take your time. Yeah. I would agree that definitely taking it slow is the right approach. I mean, it took us a long time to get to this point, but it's not because we were wasting time. It's because we were we were building the skills and trying to figure out where we fit in an agricultural market. We know lots of farmers that grow vegetables and everybody grows vegetables. And one of the things I think with a lot of beginning farmers, especially when they're getting started, is that you know, they wanna, they wanna grow their own food. And that I think is the best place to yeah. start. If you wanna get into agriculture, you know, start by growing something you like to eat and figure out how to master that. Because when it comes down to it, most plants are very similar in how they grow. And so kind of getting that skill set is where to really start. I mean, and especially if you're coming from an area where there's not farms around, maybe you're from an urban area where there's not a lot of agriculture around you know, one of the great ways to get started would be to kind of reach out to people who are doing it in your area too. I know one of the things I, coming up working in agriculture most of my life, some of the things I value the most are the experiences I had early on where farmers would, you know, really kind of talk to you about what they were doing and not, I won't say so much mentor you, but just allow you to be in the space with them to see kind of how does a farm function? Um, I know in beekeeping, it's something that I talk about a lot with the people that I work with is find a mentor, you know, find somebody that will, that will talk to you, that will show you how to do things and make sure that mentor is successful in whatever it is that you're trying to get to. I mean, oftentimes that's the best way to get started is to, to learn, um, from others. And, um, that's a, that's a, an easy way to get into anything that costs no money is just to help out somebody and learn from them. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us at Be Wise Farms. We love sharing our space. We believe it is healing. We believe there's wellness to be had here and we look forward to sharing it with you. Next time you're in the Upper Peninsula, stop by. <laughs>